What's up, everybody? Y'all want to go turkey hunting? Well, let's go. Here I am. I'm in Louisiana. 7 o'clock in the morning. About to hit the road. All right. Well, I'm making my trek north to Missouri. I just stopped to get gas in Hampton, Arkansas. A big shout out to my buddy. I really don't even know his real name, but we call him Snap. Uh, we've done some hog hunting here with dogs in Hampton. We got on them pretty good here. Shout out to you, buddy. Going through your town. So, I'm gonna arrive about five o'clock this afternoon to Missouri. I got some crawfish for Mr. Steve and his wife and probably his kids and workers and he owns a farm there so he's been wanting some Louisiana crawfish and I was able to get some so I got him a 35 pound bag of crawfish. <laughs> hey Mr. Steve I'll swap you some crawfish if you let me come kill your turkeys. How about that? <laughs> So anyway, Missouri, here we come. It's, it's all right, I'm rolling up to the farm right now. It's 4.50. So I'm gonna unload some stuff, and put on some camouflage, and get out there and see if I can spot a bird and do some scouting and try to maybe roost one this evening. So catch y'all out in the woods. So here's the deal. Um, got everything unloaded, put some camo on. <clears throat> uh, got Steve, he's up there cooking on the crawfish. Uh, I'm not gonna partake any of the crawfish, so I'm fishing to head out and do some scouting. Him and his wife are up there eating on those big old crawfish, man. They some big ones, but uh. <laughs> I'm gonna ease up here, uh, do some Just scouting. Seem to be more frequent every year. Um, uh, tomorrow, actually tonight, it's already it's already raining right now as we speak. So my game plan right now is, um, I didn't want to, but I'm gonna go set a ground blind up in this meadow down here that they were strutting their tails off in last year. Uh, don't know if there's cows down there right now. Don't know what's going on in there. But uh, I'm gonna go check it out. Probably pop up a ground blind in there because it's a good possibility. Possibility it's gonna be raining in the morning, possibly uh, for sure between two and five-ish. All right, here's the spot. It's beautiful little meadow down here, it's tucked away. High ridge. Just a bowl, protected little bowl. There's a ridge behind me, cow pasture, timber, a little bit of timber, more cow pastures. Uh, there's some wild uh, native clover, that's the word I'm looking for, that's already down here. Um, that gobbler was using that, uh, uh, that blowdown right there, he was strutting on top of it. And we were filming him from up yonder by those cedars down in here. I just spooked off five or six deer right up in there. Craig killed his, and uh, it came from out of nowhere. It just looped around and came in. Craig Robertson at the goat rope. Y'all go check that video out. I might leave a, a uh, link to the video below the same spot. All right, I got it set up. Man, you can see forever up here. Look how pretty that is. Besides me in there. Look at that. Well, good morning. It's day two. sitting there 
listening. Wind's already blowing hard. It's around 40, 40 degrees. Wind's gonna get up to about 15 today. Do the best we can. I'm sitting here listening. The woods are starting to wake up. No goblin yet. It's still early. I tried to belly crawl on those turkeys. They were a little farther than I thought and they kept, they wound up moving away. So I looped around, got in front of them, they answered me. But I guess they already had their mind made up they were going that way. Now the wind's blowing 100 miles an hour and I can't hear nothing. You know what? I hunted here for seven hours yesterday. Three hours today. I ain't seen a gobbler. I ain't heard no goblin from over here. This was a spot last year, right here. I don't know. I need to change something up. Maybe I'll shave tonight. And I probably got some bad news for y'all. I hate to tell you, but the next run and gun I do, this big camera's not coming with me. I'll bring my action camera, and that's it. I've given it two days and been toting this thing around for two days. I hadn't killed a turkey since April the second, opening day in Louisiana, and it's April the twenty, April the twenty-fifth. I cannot tell you how many times that I've set this tripod camera up, how many miles I've carried this camera. Maybe cost me some turkeys. I don't know. But I set out on a mission to get it all on film, but at some point, you know, I still, I still should be able to get the shot on camera, on that action camera, but it might not be as good. So, anyway. I'm gonna do the same thing today as I did yesterday. I'm gonna try to fix my truck for one. And then uh, I'm gonna go scout and uh, get a game plan for tomorrow. That's the, that's the sucky thing about uh, coming to Missouri. You gotta quit at one. I came up here to hunt, you know, but you got from one o'clock till tomorrow till you can go again. All right, day three more. They ride over there on the other side of that cedar strutting.
There's a coyote. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Oh, man. They was about to leave. <sighs> oh, these smokes. That is a long shot. Dude, my decoy is right beside the tree. I'm shaking. Holy smokes. I'll tell y'all the story in a minute. <sighs> These are the same three birds I was messing with or I, I saw yesterday evening when I was trying to roost birds. I know it was because one of the the fans on one of the birds he was missing a feather or he had a gap in between them i i owe a shout out to john michael hunter these gobblers were hung up over here they had to come around this point and right there in that little gully they saw my decoy and started coming up strutting but they were hung up over here with my diaphragm call and I it, the wind is blowing 30 miles an hour they could hear me they would cut me off they were answering me they were strutting and I shut up and left them left them alone okay man he's got a beard man paintbrush but anyway I called him he said, uh, he said, you got a, do you have a slate call or a glass call? He said, a lot of times them, them birds don't like you getting too aggressive with them, but just try, try a slate call real soft. And I'm telling you, dude, this wind is getting it. And I just yelped on it real light and they answered me. I did that three times and I put it up. And finally they cut and came in. Sorry I didn't have my big camera. I told y'all yesterday that uh, that uh, I think it was costing me birds and I was running and gunning and just setting it up and the time and the cumbersomeness. Of, I just, I just didn't bring it. But I got the kill shot on camera. Uh, probably won't be great. But it's, it's what I could do. Uh, my job right now is to kill, kill my birds and get back to my family. Uh, I dedicated it. Anyway, I, I got the best footage I could. Um, uh, you know, I did what I could. So... Today's the third morning. Beautiful day, other than the wind. It's definitely a beautiful day now. Honestly, I didn't think it was gonna happen. When you least expect it is when it happens. Listen to that wind. When you least expect it, it's gonna happen. That's what happened today. I was sitting down, I was I was uh, probably fixing to go over there and do some, put out some decoys and just deer hunt them because the wind's blowing so hard. And uh, man, I sat there, sat there, sat there because I struck these birds this morning. Um, same area, I struck, uh, struck them yesterday and they did the same thing. They got hung up in that bottom where they was with a hen or whatever. <clears throat> And uh, they shut up. 
they wouldn't answer me. So, I don't know, probably 45 minutes goes by. Something like that. It's 7.35 right now. But um, 30 minutes or so, nothing. And I see a hen go across this field. Same thing that happened yesterday. And um, it wasn't five or 10 minutes later, these three came out of the same holler they was in. Patience. Patience, you know. If the, if the wind wasn't blowing like this, I probably, I probably would have got up and went to another one that was gobbling because they were gobbling before the wind started blowing too, too bad, but I just, you just couldn't pinpoint them. I could barely hear these. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wish I could have got it on the big camera, but I'm sorry. I did what I could. I want y'all to see something. I struck those birds back there, same as yesterday. Okay, so I set up on them right here right here by this tree. Uh, I had some cover right here in front of us, in front of me, just in case they decided to come up this fence line and work up. They were right down in that gully, holler. So whenever they top this hill, I put this decoy out right there, okay? As soon as they top the hill, look, decoy, me. The hen came out And she went across the cow, cow pasture and went that way. About 10 minutes later, those three toms, I think, I think, let's see, yeah, came out over there and started working their way just right out there. And I was calling to them and they'd answer me with my diaphragm, like I said. But they wouldn't do anything. They would just sit there and strut, sit there and strut, sit there and strut. And uh, so I broke out my glass call. So I hit my glass call real light, just where I, I think they could just barely hear. And they were, they were out there probably, I don't know, that's probably 200 yards over there. And uh, they answered me in this heavy wind like this. They answered me. I did that three times. Real light. I never cut on it, just yelped on it. And, uh, man, that call turned them. And they started strutting this way. And they worked their way all, around, all the way around that point. And I saw their heads poking out in that little valley right, right there. And they came up, came up. It's gonna let them get closer, but you can probably see in the video, you can probably see in the video that they were, they were fisting, they didn't like something. Well, I know what they didn't like. A coyote came in right here. And uh, so I shot the last bird. He's a nice bird. Just look at this. Old cheap styrofoam decoy. And I was sitting right there. Um, when they started working their way this way, my plan was to get behind over there in that behind that cedar tree and get behind that bush have a little more cover but the sun's starting to shine over here you can see if i belly crawled over there they might have saw me through the trees so i just stayed put i was gonna get it's hard for me to see right right up in there behind that bush it'd have been perfect but actually i probably wouldn't have got a shot on them from that tree if i'd have stayed there god worked this whole thing out every bit of it Man, I have a ton of respect for these birds. <laughs> Man, that's, thank you God. I'm talking about my decoy is three yards from me. <laughs> these birds are not stupid. I hunted, I hunted hard for them. This is my third morning.
gonna shut this camera off and I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this moment. <sighs> Thank you, God. There's a turkey. I want you to see what he would have saw or what he saw before I shot him. So I'm no turkey expert by no means, but let's talk about what they did and why. I try to keep this video as short as I can. And as and I try to put the whole story and what happened into all my edits instead of just running out there and killing something. So I struck these birds from way back yonder. I just heard a faint gobble back there at the farm. So I used the terrain on way down on the other side of that hill, came up just like yesterday. It's the same exact tree I set up on yesterday, but they were on the other side of that fence over there. I don't know if it's the same birds or I'm not advocating that. Anyway, so I ease out in that field, like I said, put that decoy up because I'm thinking they're going to come out of this drain and come up and hopefully see that decoy and come on in. I know a lot of people don't like using decoys, and I don't use a decoy all the time. That's the decoy I use right now for running gun, just old cheap styrofoam decoy that I can put in my turkey vest. And uh, that doesn't take up a lot of room. I can set it up in 10 seconds. Doesn't make any noise whatsoever. Okay, they gobbled at me. My diaphragm call, they're in this gully just like yesterday, and they shut up. So I didn't move, I didn't move, I didn't move. My butt's falling asleep, my legs are asleep. I ain't moving, I'm waiting on them to come out, come up this drain, and they ain't answering my call. And, and I, so I just shut up, I left them alone. We'll let it play out, see what happens. The wind's blowing, as you can tell. So I don't, I don't, I wasn't gonna move around, do a whole lot, a lot of moving today. So a hen comes out just like yesterday, and she walks across this field and goes that way. Okay. And ten minutes later, I saw from right there. I could see from my tree. Those three strutters come up to the top of that hill right there, strutting. Actually, they weren't strutting. They were just feeding around. So I called to them, and then they started strutting. My diaphragm call. Um, they liked the diaphragm call. They had cut me off and answered me and gobble every time. I didn't get any of that on film because I didn't bring my big camera. Anyway, they were on top of that ridge right there strutting and calling, gobbling. So I called a buddy that knows a lot more about turkey hunting than I do. And I said, man, what do I need to do? What you thinking? I said, I'm, I told him the scenario. I'm in a cow pasture, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I, I thought about belly crawling and th th then I risked getting sky lit. And I thought about belly crawling down here, doing all that stuff. And he said, man, he said, try a slate or try a slate or a glass call real light he said a lot of times whenever you go cutting and hollering at them and yelping real loud with that diaphragm call they don't really like it sometimes try it see what happens so i pulled it out i just barely yelped on it just to where i enough to where i thought they could barely hear it sure enough man they answered it I did that three times and they 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 broke and it looked like they was gonna start coming and sure enough they did uh, so I stayed put. I didn't risk moving, getting next to that other tree that has lots of cover. You know, I could have belly crawled over there, but I risked it. Big risk of getting seen. Anyway, they came around this point right here. Through this. They're probably 150 yards on that ridge up there. So I'm going to show you what they would have seen whenever they came around this point.
So they came through here, around here. Keep in mind, I had a decoy out. And uh, from their perspective, would have been about right here. I can't see them yet. They're still to the ground. And I could see the top of their fans about right now. And they still can't see my decoy. So about right here, they raised up. They're looking, looking, looking. I don't think they would have came if they didn't see the silhouette of my decoy. The wind was blowing it, as you can see in the video, moving it around. I really think that helped me. I'm dead still. I ain't moving. And they strutted, came. They they know that decoy's there. Closing the distance. What's that about? 60 yards right here. I would have taken the shot if I had to. That's where I shot him right here. It's 44 yards. Right there. Anyway, I just want to show y'all real quick what they did and probably why they did it. A lot of people don't like using decoys anymore. But in this scenario, I wanted to use one in this field. I, I don't think they would have. I might be wrong, but I really, I know they saw that decoy when they hit that drain and stuck their heads up. And they went ahead and come on in. If there wasn't a hen there, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But there was a coyote back there. And as you can see in the video, they were fixing the leaves and uh, heading these woods. So all three of them, the first two had already started to leave and he was fixing to, so I took the shot. Well, that's a wrap for Missouri. I tried my best. I belly crawled. I butt scooted. I crawled up on that hill. There was a gobbler strutting on that hill over there. Crawled up on that hill. I tried everything. I got uh, I got on one at 11 o'clock, and uh, he was stuck in a gully, and he just sat there and gobbling. So I barely crawled to him, and. It took me about an hour to get down there to him. And whenever uh, I was about, I don't know, about a hundred yards from him or so, 60 yards, he left gobbling. So anyway, I did my best. I didn't get to feel that last tag, but I still learned a lot. You don't always have to feel that tag to to have some enjoyment. So man, there was gobbling turkeys every day except for Saturday and maybe Sunday. I thought about staying one more day, but I'm just ready to get home and see my family. I miss my kids and my wife, so I'll get home about probably midnight. So I'm fixing to run the steeds, get all my stuff, pack up. We came so close the last two days. So close. Mm. Just couldn't seal the deal. Man. So I appreciate y'all coming with me on this adventure here in Missouri. 
Lord willing, in a week and a half, I'll uh, I'll be headed to Nebraska. Hopefully, get a Miriam, Missouri turkey season, 2021. We killed a stud, so hopefully, I'll be back next year. I had a blast. Thank you, good Lord, for the opportunity to let me be out here. Thanks to my wife. Thanks to my kids. I know it puts a ton of strain on y'all when I leave. I love you, and I'll be home soon. Man, these turkeys are gobbling, gobbling their heads off. The weather's gonna be perfect tomorrow. Except the sun's gonna be out. But I'm ready to see my family. Enough's enough. Let's get out of here.